it has been a really, really special day. Um, a day that we're all exhausted, whoever's been here from the beginning, but we're all kind of going through it because, I don't know, it's just about meeting people, about having a network, having a community, and um, having fun with it. This isn't a discussion that should be limited to a certain space or a certain time. And it's all that can happen on Mother's Day on a celebration because Mother's Day was live. But what was the tipping point, basically? What what made you guys feel like this was a necessary discussion for yourself, but also for others to hear? Because you're all very prominent in projecting that. So it's not an internal dialogue. It's like the dialogue you're just having with your best friend or your mother or your father. It's a dialogue you're having on media platforms now. Whether that's small, whether that's big, but basically why? What was that point? Um, I'd say for myself, personally, um, even though I had uh, David there to, I guess, bounce off and I had other male role models around me, I don't want any young man, I don't want anyone to be in the place where is, which is at a point where I don't really give a shit about anything, you know? Because I couldn't speak to it. I, I couldn't speak to anybody in my industry about this. I couldn't speak to people at work. Like, to the degree, I didn't want to speak to my mother or any other women in my life because it was more so, you know, I was looked at as the one to not just provide, but I was all good. I, I was fine, you know, I could, I could deal with it. I could bounce back while I'm always down to the suite. And it just wasn't, it wasn't good enough that these conversations weren't being had and weren't being normalized, most importantly. I'm from uh, a household where I was expected to be like a doctor or an architect or a lawyer or, or something within that mold. And it was, um, it, it just wasn't me. Uh, being myself was more important for my own mental health than um, trying to be something that made someone else happy because in the long term, it wouldn't make me happy and I can't make anybody else happy. When you believe in yourself, what you're almost doing is giving other people the permission to be themselves around you. And it takes, it takes like a massive level of vulnerability. Um, and especially for men, the men that I grew up around, the men who um, kind of tried to govern me, didn't communicate vulnerability as strength. They communicated it as a sense of, of weakness in an element. Uh, I think that was an insecurity in themselves and a fear in themselves or just a lack of education in themselves. My dad's dad passed away before my dad was born, so he didn't really have a sense of how exactly the, the father thing works. And so I remember when I was really young, my dad would sit on... He'd just say, oh, do you want to chat? And I'd just sit there next to him, just chatting to him you know, for a few hours. And it was only... You know, six, seven years later, when I was in my mid-teens, that my dad told me that whilst I was at that age talking to him when he was sat on the sofa, he was going through um, a kind of a kind of serious depressive episode of about two to three years, and that was my first introduction to mental health, and that was my first introduction to a man who I looked up to, who I respected so much in my life, being openly vulnerable, and communicating to us that his support was my mum and us kids. And you can't, you can't start a conversation going, everyone needs to open up and then go, but not you. Because <laughs> you're annoying me. It's kind of like, it's just, it's just a good thing. You kind of got to have that positive hope with it, that actually, and, and, and open your heart to it really, and, and expect the best back, and, and not worry about the cynical side of it, because that, because this kind of conversation, these kind of events, are really important and it will reach an audience because everyone who experiences it will then pass it on to other people around them. I, I work in magazines, it used to be in men's magazines, which I've worked in, it used to be just naked girls on the cover. You know, now it's men crying. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know that's, that's great. I mean, you, you're, all you're doing really is, is reflecting society as well. As a media company and publishing, you're reflecting what's going on with your audience. Men are up for this stuff now, men are much more into talking about what shit they've gone through. And you used to have to push it down and it would be a taboo, you couldn't talk about it. Speaking up can be really hard and it can be really scary and it can be, I think speaking out can be sometimes more like, I don't know, I sometimes think about it as like a muscle. So it's not like, some people have an amazing natural ability to be honest and be genuine at all times. But also some people's life experiences or cultures or worlds that they're inhabiting or just their, their experiences means that that is quite challenging and that is quite hard. But the more you do, you do it, even if you get it wrong, 
the more rewarding it is. And sometimes I think people are afraid to speak out because they're afraid of saying the wrong thing. And I totally understand that and I feel that as well. But if, if you do do that, let's just think about it, what's the worst thing that can happen? Someone can call you out on that and then you learn and then you just gotta keep doing it. And then the next time you might be able to communicate yourself better and listen and learn. A lot of the conversation has been linked with basically projecting your own vulnerability to be able to get that vulnerability, which is what I did with the book in terms of telling people what life was, what is, um, not necessarily even projecting a story because it's not a story, it's real life, but telling people, hey, it's not just like Instagram or what you see on Insta, but it's also the daily ins and outs and it's up and down and it's all manageable. It's, you're able to process it more when you have a community around you and you have a network, which I can actually honestly say most of you here that are listening to the discussion, I have also seen you at partying and I've also been in other contexts with you and that's comforting for me knowing that there's no space or time that this discussion is in.